welcome to Barcelona. A crack Kiwi team led by Pistol Pete Burling has shown no mercy. Emirates Team New Zealand have displayed an unflappable temperament, seizing the advantage and going four up on the scoreboard. Enios Britannia have the will to win. It's seconds, not minutes, that separate these two boats. Losing is not part of the British mindset. The scene is set for an epic day on the water. Let's head to the start box. New Zealand has port entry. The British are on starboard. So in comes Emirates Team New Zealand. You can see on the left-hand side of your screen they cannot enter until 2 minutes and 10 seconds. Time on distance looks pretty spot on. And they get the green light to enter the start box. And then it will be Enios Britannia in at 2 minutes. Now this is going to be an interesting one today. Slightly late Enios Britannia. They get the green light. Here we go. Yeah. Let's get into it, mate. So we're good. Two. Must wait for you. Okay, he's went down, working up here. Yeah. Awesome. Really different pre-start with these bumpy conditions. Both boats taking on different manoeuvres. Can the Emirates Team New Zealand stay on the foils here? I think they're off the foils. Okay, we're trying to the tail. Your wheel. Keeping the speed on. Oh, that's a really big, big touchdown there. Emirates Team New Zealand, they're going to have to roll out of here, I think. A huge opportunity for the British. It is so tricky in this wave, it's going to be hard to get up. Really difficult to spin these boats down speed, so Emirates Team New Zealand will be very much stuck in irons there, doing everything they can to get the bow down. This could just be the weakness, the chink in the armour that the British have been waiting for. All about the foil here, no problem with them. They've been Ainsley just saying absolutely no? about keeping uh, the boat on the foils. The Emirates Team New Zealand could be well yeah, no and problem. truly very foiling. late for this start. Absolutely no problem with them, go above them is quite nice. Yeah, we'll just, the wind is so soft, we're seeing just over six knots. <laughs> The British will make sure they sail right in front of Emirates Team New Zealand and actually make sure that their wing wash makes it difficult for the Kiwis to get going as well. Not the view that Nathan Outridge would have been hoping for. British just gaining maximum pace to secure this manoeuvre. But race five is alive and it will be advantage Enios Britannia in the match. The British team will just sail past providing more wing wash. They'll dip start. They are on the foil. And Emirates Team New Zealand absolutely dead in the water at the moment. So the British will dip start. And they will be launched. Kiwis could be parked there a long time. Big bump, only just over six knots of wind pressure. So are we seeing a turning point, or as Shirley said earlier, a tipping point? We've got a guest commentator in today, and it's the, the skipper of Athena Pathway, Hannah Mills. Hannah, welcome to the team. Uh, nice, nice day to come in. Yeah, good day to come in. I mean, the British team just did an awesome job there in that pre-start. You know, obviously, the Kiwis fell off the foils, and, and the British really capitalised on that, just giving them as much gas as they possibly could, going back and forth in front of them, blocking their wind making it hard for them to get up on, on the foils um, and yeah just a great pre-start from the British. Just having a look at this manoeuvre they would have been jibing directly into their own gas here and really really difficult there to keep the boat on the foils. The British winding up and doing their entry with a lot of boat speed and a lot of apparent wind flow so potentially a little mistake there by Emirates Team New Zealand. Plenty of pace to stay on the foils there for Enios Britannia. 
just ask them to tell them on race control, maybe, that yeah. channel. Ineos Britannia coming into the top control, gate whatever, for the uh, first time in this six-leg race. Working. It is race five in the match, and they have yeah. a Call gigantic the lead. This is the umpire's message three, received. Two, three, one, all the way down. Has this feeling, Glenn, a little bit of day three of back in Auckland when New Zealand had to level the series up and then it was that moment in time the following day and maybe this is that moment for Enios Britannia. Absolute dream start in this race for Enios Britannia, doing a beautiful job keeping their boat foiling. So almost a three quarters of a leg difference there. The British team executing their job beautifully at the bottom. They'll be lining themselves up. We have said on so many occasions there is not too much difference in these sailing teams. And it just will take a little bit of a moment to put the pressure back on the other team as Enels Britannia now completes leg number two of six. And will head back upwind. So New Zealand he heading down to that bottom mark gate, and it, it is quieter at the bottom. What I've noticed is that Ineos are actually on a bigger jib, and uh, just a little bit more horsepower probably helped them in that pre-start, as well as very good positioning. For Emirates Team New Zealand now, their, their best hope in this one really is if Ineos happened to fall off the foils, but Ineos looked fully powered up by coming up this second windward beat. And uh, it just looks the downward legs are the harder ones in terms of picking a moment to, to jibe. Upwind is just a little bit easier. So Emirates Team New Zealand uh, complete leg number two. It's been a good downward leg. They've picked up some, well, let's say they've closed the gap somewhat. Henels Britannia at the top gate. And that will be halfway distance in race of five of the match. Halfway to potentially their first win. This is the race committee. We are moving the windward gate, lengthening okay, to 1.55 nautical miles and shifting the axis to 210. Well, that'll be welcome news to Ineos Britannia. Lengthening the course means more wind, and we're seeing between 9 and 11 knots at the top uh, and between 7 and 9 at the bottom. So there's still plenty holes in this. But Ineos Britannia doing a great job of putting them together. Coming at the bottom here, I think. Looks good pressure out there. Left turn. Left turn's good. Just be about minimising manoeuvres now for the British team and just sailing the boat well from here. They will not get mown down through performance. It'll only be through a mistake. That we'll see Ineos Britannia can see to the Kiwi team. Enios Britannia, that's four legs done. Final upwind leg facing them. Enios Britannia just sailing into a really big, big, big right hand bending pressure there. So that'll help them. 29 knots of boat speed sailing into some really, really Big seaway there. As this breeze increases, the boats actually get easier and easier to sail. So they'll be pretty much on a delivery trip from here. Not much that the Kiwi team can do to dig their way back into this. Enios Britannia approaching the top gate for the final time. When they round it, they are heading home and heading home to the finish line. And they look odds on to pick up their first win in the match. Day four of this cup is turning into a monster day for Enios Britannia and their legion of fans. Both boats nearly 40 knots of boat speed around nine knots of breeze in these bumpy conditions, so absolutely ripping downwind. Potentially only one more manoeuvre for Ineos Britannia, and they will be heading towards the finish. 
keeping it high and those maneuvers. Safer in the waves. Yeah, plenty of sailing with plenty of margin is what the British team need to do, just keeping it smooth. Just briefly, Hannah, how good? How good's this? Yeah, it's amazing to see, you know, as a British fan, there's, there's tons of British fans here and everyone's been waiting for this first win. So, you know, just really with the team now so that they can get it across the line. We talk so long about the America's Cup and we say, can they come back? Can a team come back? What can they do? You just never know. It can happen on any random day. But the phrase, this is the America's Cup, has never been true and truer today in race number five. As Enios Britannia have sailed flawlessly in this. And that will be one ecstatic crew. You can imagine what it feels like coming close to the line to get their first win in the match. But Ineos Britannia have changed the dial. They have just jump-started the comeback, and they're on the board. Ineos Britannia get win number one in the match. Oh, you know what that means. You know what that means. The fight back is on. Yeah, it's a good, good win for us and, uh, you know, tricky on the start. We sort of trained for those situations. We managed to make it stick and, and get the Kiwis off the foil. And obviously it's pretty tough for, for them from then on. But we did a good job to get the boat around the course. Guys did a nice job to sail the boat fast and look forward to this next one. Pete, what happened at the start? Yeah, I mean, biggest lull on the day, uh, right on that entry. So it was a bit of a shame we couldn't quite get across them or, or really get enough speed to jibe. Uh, and then drop off the foil, and obviously building breeze, it's pretty hard to make a pass. Enios Britannia have capitalised on a Kiwi mistake and neutralised New Zealand's dominance. Is this the start of a San Francisco-style comeback? We'll be back after the break with race six. Welcome back to the Louis Vuitton 37th America's Cup match. Enios Britannia promised to come back stronger after four straight losses, and today they finally clawed one back. A mistake in the start box ended New Zealand's scoreboard supremacy. Can the British capitalise on today's dream start? Let's head to the start box for race six. Enios Britannia has port entry. Emirates Team New Zealand is on starboard. British team rolling straight into attack. It's whether they actually roll into a jibe from there. Emirates Team New Zealand immediately going into a defensive position. Next move if they tackle me to go with. In no space for the British to bear away and jibe on the option to tack. He's gone. So Emirates Team New Zealand here will match and try and actually get into leeward of the British team here and actually stop them rolling over the top. Fast. British on the back foot here, Shirley. Yeah, tricky position for the British. They try and outroll past the Kiwis, get in front of them. They're going to use the boundary to escape here. The British will try and actually re-roll over the top of the Kiwi team here. And it's Team New Zealand trying to get underneath the British and hold them out from starting. going to be early on the pin of this. Just going to get a couple of Not more out there. Okay, Shirley. You're well. Right the the Killing one for the pin. Sure. They're working on that. Good. Yeah. Killing one. All the way. Yeah. About 10, I reckon. Okay, just Three, two, Wouldn't one. be surprised if we see Emirates Team New Zealand roll out early here. Oh, good. Go now. Go up. All the way. Race six is a go in the match for the Louis Vuitton 37th America's Cup. Well, they were even off the line in terms of distance, but Ineos Britannia were 10 knots quicker than the Kiwis. 
A definite win off the start line there to the British team. Emirates Team New Zealand having to get attack in, so they will be effectively one manoeuvre behind, even with an even start. This battle is so tight. Nothing in it. Lining up for another cross. Hey, up on the breeze now. Very even on the last one. Or we just going to lay line, I think. Maybe lay line here, Ben. Okay. Voice of Dylan Fletcher. I mean, not really enough room to tack and defend. So I think we're just going to lay. Close that. Yep. Okay. 15 to lay line. Our British team will just be minimising manoeuvres to try and save the two boat length. Good wind at top lift back. It's just getting into a little more. Gain. Stand by. Slightly lift phase might be the only thing for us. A big wave to get over here. Come on. Very well. We've also seen how strong the Kiwis are at manoeuvres, particularly tacks. In East Britannia, okay, just right limiting the number. I don't think there'll be an opportunity to hit Emirates Team New Zealand here either. We'll just have to wait to see a close cross coming up. Ineos to give way, boat. They're continuing at the moment. Top gate for the first time in race six, and it really is what we've been expecting. Another great match. But it's Ineos Britannia who've picked up the opening race of the day, who will lead the defender around. But there's not too much in it. And Hattie, you've got to love this style of racing, don't you? Yeah, this is what we all hope for, you know, a real good battle on the water. Fantastic start by Ineos Britannia. And, you know, Emirates Team New Zealand done a great job up that beat just to keep it close, keep it tight. Britannia is starting to look like a rocket ship in race six. Again being sailed beautifully by the crew and they lead after two legs of eight. So two legs of eight, there's still a long way to go. And there's Emirates team New Zealand have to find something because today seems today when Britannia are on point. They want two from two. Can the defender stop them? This is the race committee. We are moving the lured gate, shifting the course access to 200. Course length now 1.6 nautical miles. Let's keep it going. Lock it in. Really Pressure close to the water surface there with that lured foil yes, as it was highly right loaded. So right Happy lucky not to get a big ventilation there, but all under control. Whatever Enios Britannia has done in the last 24 hours, uh, it's paying off at this point. Three legs completed in race number six, and they continue to lead the defender, hoping to make it two from two. Races like this are about seconds, not minutes, but seconds, and not making mistakes. The defender's around, but still, they are the chaser. It feels like they're the chaser, Glenn. This is the race committee. We are moving the windward gate, shifting the course axis to 196 and shortening to 1.5 nautical miles. Yeah, so Ineos Britannia there just down this downwind leg, just chose to put in an extra dive just to get back in phase and, and keep tight cover now on Emirates Team New Zealand and to just try and, I guess, a bit more traditional match racing. Yeah, sacrifice a little bit of your lead to keep control. Very, very smart sailing on board Ineos Britannia. And control is something that they want to do to come off this racetrack today with a second straight win and get that much closer to the defender who at this point lead 4-1. And they are really being tested today, but they are being bested at the moment by a team that is sailing beautifully. And that is Enios Britannia. Split roundings. Oh, really low in the water there. They haven't got the cant all the way down on board Emirates Team New Zealand. It's another unforced error from the Kiwi team. 
and a big touchdown. So not only a loss in the manoeuvre of the jibe, but a loss in the manoeuvre of the mark. So it's a big, big pump of the brakes and a run off onto the grass. So they'll need to dig their way back into this. And yes, Britannia were wide at that mark as well. I mean, it just gives us an indication how tough it is. Big manoeuvre in the waves. Yeah, you just see boat there just not set up how it should have been for that manoeuvre. And a bit of a loss of the rudder there as well. So can't and a bit of rudder all in one. So we've seen how hard it is to sail the boats well in these bumpy conditions. Ineos Britannia flying into the top gate. That will complete five legs of eight. They are in control. They've said they wanted to bring the fight to the defender, and they have brought the fight today. Emirates are around, heading down. There's not too much in this race number six of the match. And Enios Britannia, who won race number five, have really controlled this race, which is what they would have wanted to do. Capitalised somewhat on a couple of errors by Emirates Team New Zealand. And with two legs to go, that second win is getting a little bit closer. Yeah, the race is getting a little tighter. Any team that gets this next win shift right out of either side of the course will take a gain or a loss. So very dynamic at the moment. So Emirates Team New Zealand will be wanting Ineos Britannia to engage and start rolling to some tacks. Put the pressure on them. The British will be wanting to just sail fast into the breeze and shift that they're wanting. So. Kiwis are confident of their manoeuvres. We've seen in the last few days making gains, losing less speed with every tack. Oh, nearly a touchdown there. It's a little too much. Bow down from the rudder trim there. A little too far kicked under the boat. Just in control. It's 25 to low. Just having a look at this tack, we'll just watch the rudder. It'll just kick under the boat a little bit there, and that actually just forces the bow straight into the water, so that elevator that's attached to the bottom of that rudder, lifting the back of the boat too hard and forcing that big bow straight in the water. Team doing a really nice job to catch that and keep the boat on its foils. This is the last time both boats will be at the top gate. The run to home is next on the eighth and final leg. Downwind and still. Enios Britannia lead from Emirates Team New Zealand. Is it one wobble away for either boat? British Great. team just need to whack this tent peg in with a sledgehammer and they've got to get across the bow of Emirates Team New Zealand. That's a huge moment. And that'll do for Enios Britannia on day four. They are two from two. And it's 4-2. You heard it. They're back in it. Across comes the defender. They will have a big review tonight. They've gone 0-2 today. Lee Lee, you've had 24 hours to, to make some improvements. Now you've got another 24 hours. <laughs> what are we going to see on Friday, mate? Uh, there's definitely more to come. Um, you know, we had a great day getting out yesterday and just kind of throwing it around. And, and uh, you know, Emirates New Zealand have certainly set the bar pretty high and, and we feel like we're kind of clawing into them every time we get out so we're just going to keep that pressure on and, and keep the momentum going so yes yeah, yeah great to have a couple of wins under the belt today that's for sure how surprised were you by the improvement in Ineos Britannia and how, how caught on the hop were you 
I don't think any of us are surprised at all. We know that they're very good sailors and have a great boat. Um, we didn't really execute the best day ourselves today, so we sort of let ourselves down. So we'll go and review that tonight and um, come back next time in, uh, in better shape. After a day of diving into the data, Enios Britannia jump-started their comeback and finally got a win on the scoreboard. But there was more to come. Fired up by that victory, Britain's very first America's Cup match win in 90 years. They returned to the racetrack and finished the day two from two. The Kiwis still have a two-race advantage, but the question has to be asked. Have the British finally found the road to recovery? Tomorrow is a rest day, and then it's game on. We will be back with all of the highlights as this thrilling first to seven series resumes on Friday.